think it's live. I'm on the TV. You're on the Facebooks. All right. I'm only on the TV. I mean, we could try to hook it up to the <laughs> TV, but that would be like be annoying. Yeah. All right. Well, I still don't have a clever intro for this, but this show, this Facebook live stream, which is basically a TV show in this yeah. day and age. Yeah. Isn't that funny? Yeah. But anyway, this is called Let's Talk About, about Songs. So let's talk about some songs. Yeah. So my special guest today is Rachel Marie. Rachel is awesome. Um, she is a really cool singer-songwriter. Um, we met about two years ago. How did we ago? meet? I feel like it was the Lizard Lounge open mic. Probably. Okay. Yeah. I believe you. Yeah. We went at the Lizard Lounge open mic, which is a really cool open mic in Boston, and basically how most of the musicians around here meet each other. Yeah. Pretty much. Yes. Um, but Rachel in, um, but, uh, we've been friends for a couple of years now. Rachel is amazing. She's just, um, recently released an album called Fa False Foundations, which is so, 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 so good. Thanks, buddy. And, um... Also taking the dive into making music full time. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. weird and scary, and you're it's gonna horrifying. hear a lot of stories about it from both of us because we both decided to take that plunge. Yep. But for that, a couple of things. Firstly, if you have any questions for either of us, if you have questions for me, if you have questions for Rachel, um, or if you just want to tell us how your week's going, leave them in the yeah. comment section. There's a comment section to do that, and we're gonna see it every time you comment. And we will, we will read your comments aloud and answer them if they are questions. So make sure you leave those questions there, is what I'm trying to say. And um, before we do get into any serious storytelling or anything, Rachel, you want to play us a song? I suppose. Here's a song. I'm messing everything up.
That song was called again? Not okay. Yeah, and that was off the album you released just a few months ago, wasn't it? It's true. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us, I guess, well, first first, I want to actually call out some people who've been very patiently waiting, but I want to say hi to some people who've been watching it. Sean says hi. Hey, sounds great. Thanks, dude. Cameron yes. says hi. Hey! Oh, and a big hey -o from New England Indy. Heyo, right back to you too, man. Let's see. Oh, and I also want to call out Rachel Baldwin, who was actually last week's guest. She and now me. she's watching. Yeah, so thank you, Rachel. You're a cool person. Let's see. Ooh, and I think we've got like a big juicy question right out of the gate. In love with her sound. I think she, I think she means you. Yes. Let's see. And I want to know her biggest lyrical influence. So actually, yeah, let's, um, well, so tell us a little bit about, I guess, your influences and this um, this album that you just released, False Foundation. Ooh. Yeah. I don't know. It's like, it's funny because that the songs on that album I wrote over the course of such a long period of time. Because um, the last time I recorded was 2012. So it was mm, like, yeah, things that I wrote in college and things that I wrote since I moved here. So that's just such a huge yeah. stretch of life. Yeah. And you actually... Yeah. And I guess, like, tell us a little bit more about all that life that was happening, because you're not originally from the Boston area, right? True. Yeah. Where are you from? I'm originally from Pennsylvania. I grew up in Bethlehem. Um, but my family is from Pittsburgh, so don't talk to me about the Phillies, because I don't care. Um, anyway. <laughs> Both my brother, um, my brother went to school in Pittsburgh, and I went to school really near, near Pittsburgh, yeah. so. And if you, I don't know, if you don't love. Western PA. Yeah. Um, I'm just saying. Anyway. What am I saying? Oh, yeah. yeah, that's where I'm from, and then I went to college in New Jersey, and I moved here for grad school. Yeah. What was the original question? The original question was lyrical influence. Well, um, you, were, you were telling us kind of about, like, your life. That's and, like, true. all that life that happened during the five that's years true. since you recorded your last album and this yeah. one. Yeah. That's true. So you moved, so you had, you went to college. Yeah. In New Jersey. You moved up here for grad school. Yes. And where'd you go to grad school again? I went, to the, I went to the Longy School of Music. Nice. For historical performance. Yeah. And, and you did a lot of lot singing there. Of debt. I did. Hey. I did do a lot of singing. So I was like mostly singing medieval and renaissance and baroque and like some classical music and then i graduated and immediately started doing this again nice whoops oh and when you say and when you say this again so you'd been you've been doing the singer songwriter thing for like a big part of your life right yeah i like i i started playing out like i think i did my first real gig when i was 16 Ooh. and then put out an album halfway through college and then was too busy like writing an honors thesis and then going to grad school to like really be doing it i just yeah. wasn't for a while yeah. um so getting back into it was really nice yeah 
you got back into it in a big way by um, releasing this album at like a really big show at the Burren. Yeah. Which was awesome. It was great. I, so might, have, I might have gone to that show, just saying. It was, um, it was, awesome. it was really, it was really, really awesome. It was rad. Um, but actually, I guess, Rachel, I promise, Rachel Baldwin, I promise we're going to answer your question. But um, one thing I actually really noticed about that show, um, so your album has like, not a ton of instrumentation on it like there's bass and like yeah. some fiddle and stuff but it's a lot of you and your guitar and actually at that release show you pulled a really bold move um which i low-key want to imitate but you pulled a really bold move and you actually played that show solo you yeah. didn't have a backing band yeah you were solo um your opening act Lindsay sampson she was solo um and I'm gonna, I would guess that a lot of your influences were probably like solo singer songwriters. Would that, would that be wrong? No. My, the funny thing is, my, I, I like, I don't wanna say biggest influence because I don't know that that's necessarily true, but definitely my, like, I don't know, one of my first big influences was Indigo Girls. And they've mm. definitely like been consistent. Yeah. My mom and I see them almost every year, um, and they're they're in Pennsylvania in October most years, which is great because that's the month of my birthday and my mom's birthday. That's so, so great. Almost every year for our birthday month, we're like we're gonna go on the Indigo Girls. Um, oh man! But Emily Sailors, who is half of Indigo Girls, is definitely one of my favorite songwriters. Patty Griffin is also one of my favorite songwriters. Yes. So those, so those have been like my two lifelong big influences. And then like uh, all the other stuff that my mom was listening to when I was a kid, like Paul Simon and James Taylor, you know? Hey. Those. Those, those guys. folks. I grew up on a ton of Simon and Garfunkel, um, so I definitely, re so I relate to that. And also you mentioned Indigo Girls, and they were one of like the first... Not like the first, but one of the first acts that I looked up when I'm just like, hmm, write, writing your own thong. Um, and yeah, yeah, they're so good. They're so good. Yeah. They're so good. Okay. So, False Foundations. Yes. It is out. You and it is a song that has been influenced by a big batch of years in your yeah. life. And kind of the first time you dip your toe back into um, back into the singer-songwriter thing. Toe. And now you're doing it full time. Yeah. 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 It's very scary. Yeah. It's nerve wracking every day. Yeah. What would you, I guess like so much of it, there's so much uncertainty. It's true. <laughs> like <laughs> so much uncertainty for all y'all um, <sighs> watching at home. Um, I want to play a song, but before I get to that, I want to ask like off the top of your head, if someone had to ask you what like is the biggest uncertainty in general or just like right now or whatever what would you say well I think the thing is it's financial and that's just like it's it's just the, the most upsetting thing because I don't have I don't know like I don't have doubts obviously I have the like imposter syndrome doubts totally constantly I have yep. those but as far as uncertainty is concerned like those pass because I can reach out to people or remember people who have been affected by my music in a meaningful way and I can be reminded of that but you can't just be like reminded of grocery money you know like I, I don't yep. I'm not I'm not I'm, I don't doubt that I'm doing the right thing and I don't doubt that I'm doing a thing that's good for the world yeah but it's just not like, it's such a bummer that I have to wake up and think about, like, how am I going to make $100 tomorrow, you know? Yeah. I instead of, how am I going to do my craft well and sustain meaningful relationships with the people who are attached to my music? Because so much of this is you're basically starting your own business. Yeah. It's all big, scary. It's all yeah. always big, scary questions. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, meow. Am I allowed to sing along if you play songs right now? Yeah, of course you yes. are. And even though we can't see you guys um, out there in Facebook, you internet land, a thank you for watching. And if you want to sing along, sing your hearts out.
And uh, drop us a comment or like leave us a heart react so we know that you're singing along or otherwise enjoying this. Anyway. That's me imitating the hearts rising, sorry. It's so much fun to watch. It's just like, whoo, there's just little bubbles across the screen. Yeah. Like it's not it like it's not just pleasant enough that people are enjoying the video. See, just like that. See, like you guys are. See, it's already like so. It's already so wonderful that you guys are enjoying the the video. But then every time you do the heart react and everything, these little hearts just float like bubbles all across the screen, and we feel all happy. Okay, I'm done. All right. So I wrote a song about actually. Just really a lot about that uncertainty, so... Oh. Staying up till sunrise and sleeping through the day Waking up an hour before you have to play Counting change for cigarettes and strings for your guitar Wonder if you left your life at the other bar And it's hard to say if it gets better And it's hard to say if it gets worse All you get is just what's coming no one gets what they deserve No one gets what they deserve Trade your songs for fries and coffee Sell your soul for gasoline All your friends are getting married You're still married to the dream Every city is a postcard Every town's an empty room Every somewhere that you're going Is just somewhere you're passing through And it's hard to say if it gets better And it's hard to say if it gets worse Get it's just what's coming. No one gets what they deserve. No one gets what they deserve. statement but there's a cat over yeah. in the corner just outside of the side of the camera and it's she's so, so skittish oh my god like the, the tiniest noise gets made actually a car door shut the other day and she panicked oh like inside god. the house um but she walked in she walked into the living room and just immediately was like what oh my god. like as though she's never seen a guitar before oh my god anyway I can't even. Meow. Yeah. yeah, your boyfriend's cats are so cute. It's true. I don't understand, like, that I get to hang out with them all the time. That's it. Let's see. Well, so, one. Why don't you play a song? And another, I'm gonna say a whole hi other to song? Yeah, a whole other song. And I'm gonna say hi to some more people who've just joined. Do you have any Hi to Laura. For 
Laura's watching. Mick's watching. Hey, Mick. Mick is a really cool dude from Scotland. Good. Um, who's an also another like seriously badass full-time musician. Nice. Um, and he plays all the time, and he kills it. Oh, and also Cameron enjoyed that as evidenced by his comment, which is woo. Woo. And it's in all caps, so you know he means it. Yeah. Cool. Do I have any requests? Yeah. Oh, man. Um... I have a really sad request. Yeah. Okay. Um, Strange Reunion. Oh, dude. Yeah. Strange Reunion is another song that is on False Foundations, and it's one of my favorites that this lady has written, and you're already going to hear why. It's so good. I was, um, I went to the New England Songwriters Retreat over Labor Day weekend, and mm, yeah. there are, like, late night song circles, because that's how, that's, 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 that's what happens. Um... But my, I think my favorite one was one where we all were playing a bunch of really depressing songs in a row, and I said something about how, like, it's normal to express, like, grief over and over and over and over again. Oh god, so much. For years. But that's not how people act, and it's just, like, such a gift that as songwriters, we get to just, like express the same the same grief over and over and over again and like people don't get sick of it and like and everyone should be able to do that and then yeah. that was like one of the most so like these this group of people just like ended up having a conversation about how genuinely healthy it is that we get to do that and how we don't know how would we like how we would cope otherwise oh heck yeah but I wanna, I'm gonna actually ask you a couple of questions after you play this cause yeah. like and I actually, sorry, I'm going to play the song, I swear. I, like, almost cried playing this song at a show in July. And it's been yeah. over three years. And I, like, I just, I think, I think it's, I think it's nutso. Anyway. Do you feel like um, actually telling us a little bit about what the song's about before you get into it? Um, no. Okay. And it, it ruins it. That's true. Whatever, nothing matters. Meow, meow, meow. Oh my gosh, my hands are slipping, I'm so sweaty. I had hoped to see you sooner, but I never thought we'd see each other here. Tragic, he was way too young. No man should lose his only son. Thanksgiving just won't be the same this year. I wish that you were smirking in the corner, hearing what they have to say. And I wish your absence weren't the reason.
this shouldn't have been out But it sure as hell shouldn't have been you Sure as hell or somewhere darker Nobody had prepared themselves for you It's a strange, strange reunion you called for Cause I think the biggest one I've seen for good reason And we didn't bury you in Allegheny County But we raised you up in Cleveland You tested every limit You learned it from your dad And yours was one of the freest family had. You flew nests and you hopped fences and you were coming to a sense of where you'd been and who you'd be and where you'd go. And when you fell, it was by It's a strange, strange reunion you've called for cuz Reminding us all just who and how to love And no matter how many times we said It can never be enough Oh man, I love that song. Thanks buddy. So, yeah. Yeah. Now we're sad. Now we are very sad. <laughs> but actually, but you know, sad in hopefully a healthy way. Yeah. Um, as you were kind of talking about earlier, you mentioned you went to the New England Songwriters Retreat and you found a lot of people who were just, um, I guess, said, you know, you mentioned being a songwriter. The best part is that you get to ex constantly express those emotion, uh, you know, emotions, grief, loss, and everything, instead of just saying it once and say, and then claiming, oh, it's all out of my system now, when it's not. Yeah. Um, and the best part about the New England Songwriters <sighs> Retreat was that it was kind of a chance to be around a lot of people who thought like that. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. else? I guess, like, what, a, what else was a, what else was great about it? Um, because... And I guess, like, tell us, like, a little bit more about it overall, because I've been to, like, some festivals that are very mm -hmm. similar, but I've never been to, like, a songwriter's retreat. Yeah. Um, I can't say that every, that everyone in our audience has been to a songwriter's retreat, so let's do some more. I think, actually, um, the best thing about it for me as an artist, there were two things about it for me that were wonderful as an artist. One was um, Lori McAllister of Red Molly did a, like, an elective course that was, like, getting getting your band off the ground, I think was what she called oh, it. Oh, that's so cool. Um, Red Molly is a dope, dope, dope folk trio, if y'all want uh, to check them out. I'm and the fact, and they're, they're also, they're also doing very well, so the fact that one of them took the time to All three to, of them were there All three year. of them? Oh, well, they were, they were, them? like, on faculty, yeah. Yeah. Um, so all three of them took the time to come to songwriters camp, basically. Yeah, and yeah. then, like, teach us things. Yeah. Um, but one of the things that she said was, and, and this was amazing and wonderful, beautiful timing as someone who just quit my day job. Um, one of the things that she said was that if you're, if you're doing music full-time and you're spending, like, 20 hours a week on music and 20 hours a week on the business, you're doing it wrong. Like, at, at least if you're spending 20 hours... Or if you're spending 15 hours on the business, you need to be spending at least, like, 25 hours on the music. Like, because mm. your craft is the point. Like, when you lose the songs. It, like, if you lose the songs, what's the point, you know? Like, you yeah. can send as many booking emails as you want, and you can have, like, great photos. But, like, what's the point? You need you need the songs. The yeah. songs are the point. Um, like, and even if they're not your songs, even if you're playing covers, like... The important thing is the songs. So that was huge. And I was like, oh, no, yeah. I've been, like, drowning in my laptop for 40 hours a week. Yep. I need to not do that. Yeah. And it's really hard for me to be like, actually, if you sat down and stared at a blank page for three hours, like, at least you were exercising the muscle 
that is your brain and like trying to make something come out. Yeah. Um, so having a, having a person who is like successful say things like that was important. Um, and the other thing that was really huge for me was that I haven't been challenged as a songwriter and as a performing songwriter in the way that I was there in a long time. And Vance Gilbert, who I like still can't even believe mm. I was in the same room with for like three days because he's just so... Vance he's Gilbert. one of those guys for me who's like, Vance, you yeah. do the thing and you do the thing well and yep. meaningfully. Yep. Vance Gilbert for everybody watching along <sighs> on your laptops and phones. Hi again, by the way. Um, Vance Gilbert is another really, really heavy badass of a singer-songwriter. Yes, yes, um, yes. Um, but he, yeah. he, when we were with him, we like went around with groups to these different instructors. So like one day we were with Ellis Paul and one day we were with Abby Gardner yeah. and one day we were with Vance. Um, and the day that we were with Vance, oh, and one day we were with um, George Worsbach, who's just hysterical. Anyway, um, when we were with Vance, he had us get up and sing a song and really like teach, teach us through our own performance. And I sang, mm. the song that I sang was the song that didn't make the record. And I was like, because if I'm going to sing a song, the song that I'm going to sing is the song that I know that I need to workshop. Um, and it was incredible to just have someone be like, that thing was over dramatic. That thing that you did with your voice there, not necessary. You need to switch up the guitar somewhere. You know, that line, oh, that's a good line that really speaks to me in a way that, you know, I didn't see coming. Um... But yeah. to have like like real critique, yeah, was great. And and Ellis did a lot of that too. But I didn't get to sing in Ellis's class. Yeah. So that so so Vance is the one that sticks with me. But like a lot of what you get in the singer songwriter community is a lot of like mutual support and love fests, which are nice and great and wonderful. But sometimes when I sing a song that I'm like, I don't really know if this song is doing what it needs to do. And Most people, of the time, yeah, the people, response yeah. is like, "What are you oh, talking so about?" Great. That song it's, was beautiful. Yep. Oh, and that's, like, oh, it's so great. Yeah. And I'm like, thank you. Yeah. However, like I, I didn't, I wasn't just being self-deprecating. Like I really want. Yeah. Help. And that's kind of that kind of ends up tying back to the business part of it because you know the whole point is if you're going to run like, a business, it's a, it's a craft. You, it's, yeah, it is a craft. It's like hit, and if and when the craft is the focus, is like oh. Well, if this is a product, I should probably make sure that it's a good product. Yeah. So it's really gratifying to have people who have made very good products. Yeah. Have been able to sell really good products. Basically, have you critique your product? Yeah. And like, have that not be kind of like a a big weird thing. It's just like, no, this is this yeah. is what we're here. This is what we're here to do. Yes, your music is a product. You should be proud of it. That's why you decided to be a musician for a living. Yeah. And then I immediately came home and posted in the emerging Boston area singer songwriters group on Facebook, like, hey, who wants to do this? Yep. That's no. That's such an important thing. Yeah. Um, I was at, so I was talking to Rachel Baldwin about this. Um, our last week's guest. Um, and we actually Rachel. Um, she had a oh, yeah, graduated lit degree. That. She got, so she, you know, she, she did creative writing stuff and she did, um, went through a lot of workshop environments. I did creative writing in college and went through a lot of workshop environments. And that is so invaluable to just have someone yeah. completely straight face tell you, this is working, like this is not. Like peer life. Yeah. And just be, <laughs> and have you, and like without, and basically encourage you to look at something that is very emotional mm -hmm. through a more analytical lens and basically have you just not be precious about it. Yeah. Okay, I get that you made this thing. Let's take it apart and see how it works. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I know that's like something... Actually, um, that actually is kind of... Mm. Sorry. So, I actually, um, going off of that, that was a transition, I promise. Um, I actually want to play a song that didn't really come together until I workshopped it. Songs! Um, yes. Which is really cool. This is a song off of. I'm so I'm in the studio recording right now, and this is a song that <laughs> right I wanted <now>. to <laughs> right now. Um, not like right now, right now, but sorry, you know, in general. I'm a snark ball. You are a snark ball. It's okay. I am too. But um, this is a song that I wanted to record. But it was also, it was very new, and I hadn't put a lot of work into it, and I was kind of uncertain about it. I had some general ideas, but I was like, okay, like, this is definitely a first draft. 
And um, I'm recording with uh, two really phenomenal producers, uh, George Woods and Patrick Hanlon, and George especially um, was super, super good about getting on me and, and critiquing the song in a meaningful oh, way. Oh, I've heard saying, that about George. This is, you know, you know, <laughs> and saying this works and this doesn't. Like and, go um, home and rearrange this. And yeah, like... he did. He um, okay. and he and he legit told me like you need to do you need to make a lot of changes to this for it mm -hmm. to work. And he really challenged me to like actually go home, take apart something that admittedly I wasn't sure about, but still taking it apart, really taking it apart. It's scary. And then, yeah, it's absolutely scary. The best and, kind. Yeah, and I'm so glad that I did because um, the thing that I'm about to play for you now is something I'm a lot more proud of. And it's called So Long. Like a train without a track Like a ship upon the sand Like a skate without a pump You've been this way for way too long Like a fiddle without strings Like a bell too cracked to ring Like a choir lost its song You've been this way for way too long Without a sound So long So long And all the flowers Are grown and gone So long Like the wine without the bread Like the grave without the dead Like the fence around it all You've been this way for way too long So long So long So long Damn. I don't know, your phone's mad. Oh no, my phone is mad, but that's okay.
because we're gonna press a button and we're gonna check on everybody who's watching because we just got a bunch of new video viewers. Well, my videos, viewers. So hey to Billy, hey to Katie Solomon. Katie is in a really awesome band called it's Jackals, and she's watching right now, I don't and that get her. means a lot. She's so good. She's so good. Go she's home. So don't go great. home. Keep watching. Liz is watching. Liz is watching. Patrick is watching. Hi to both of you. Thank you so much for tuning in. And um. I'm doing a quick little time check. Um, let's see. Six so four one. Yeah. That's so we got late. some time. Okay. We got a little bit of time. Wow, we're opposite. Um. Yeah, I guess. Wanna let's, let's hear another song from you. Any more requests? Yeah. Only to hear what uh, you want to play. If Damn all y'all have home, uh, all watching at home have requests, leave them in the comment section because we still have twenty minutes. And we do want to talk to you guys. Oh. Oh, and my dad commented wonderful, by the way. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Yeah. How are you? You're wonderful. Thanks, Dad. You're wonderful. Well, you tell it's a big it's a big love fest over here in the world of let's talk about songs. But there is a lot of love in songs. That's true. I don't know what to play. Panic, 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 panic. Uh, well, let's hear, um, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. yeah, oh. yeah, I was gonna say, so for him, we all just watching, Rachel has an awesome album called False Foundations Do Off. I... False. Critique, False. what's a, what's a, what's a, what's a capo? Yeah, it's a thing that's supposed to be really helpful, but sometimes is not. But, uh. I guess if I have a request, it'd be for another song off of False Foundations. Yay! This is a song that I wrote for my best friend, and contrary to popular belief, we are not romantically involved. But it is important to write platonic love songs. I'm so sorry. Also, you can just have like super romantic friendships, and that's fine. Yeah. You should be allowed to get emotionally involved with your friends. It's healthy, in fact. Yeah. We couldn't have known. We couldn't have dreamed. With our bodies and words trapped in teenage time. up to hold us and we couldn't stay standing we didn't know what we were planting i am with you at your core you are mine and i am yours for worse or for better i love you forever i promise to The biggest of hearts, the smallest of seeds, sown in the soil of our skin and souls, planted deep. You've always been there underneath it all, helping me bloom when we only knew rain. We didn't know how. Or for better, I love. 
conversations to this effect. But um, for everybody watching along at home, I want to ask, and this is pro this is probably going to be self-evident, but there are a lot of songs about love, it's true. especially when people are playing acoustic guitars instead of electric guitars. And you wrote a song that is about a very deep, a very deep love. Mm -hmm, Two things. Mm -hmm, it is mm -hmm. about a very deep love that is not romantic. Yeah. It is about being there for your friend. And it's not about a friend who has a problem. It's not about any of that. It's not about just like any of those other quali- It's not about any of those qualifiers. It is just about, I love you, friend. Yeah. And I guess, you know, it might seem self-evident, but... What made you want to put that song out in the world? Oh. The funny thing is, I like, sometimes, it, like, it's a really peppy song. But it also is just like... I don't know, I guess the, the core of that song to me, and the core of... Someone asked me recently what I'm the most proud of in my life. And my answer was that friendship. Because it's like... Yeah. Whatever, when was I a freshman in high school? Like, wow, I can't do math. Whatever. Like, like 12 years of, like, really mm, yep. hard work. Yeah. And I think there are a lot of marriages that aren't there. Are, there, are, there are definitely marriages that do not last 12 years. I yeah. Mean, there well, are a lot of marriages that don't last 12 years. Or even, like, you, you know, like, you, you just skate by and there are a lot of relationships that are like that that you just skate by and it's I think that was the thing was really just like also so much of that song was just like picked up from text messages that I like rearranged and made rhyme that's so it's great like there are so many conversations where we're just like gushing at each other and Louie my my bestie who I wrote that song for he has a he has a sleeve like like a partial sleeve Louis, um, I also want to call out the fact that Louis is watching at this very moment, actually. He's so amazing! He has a sleeve that's just, like, these gorgeous flowers, and yeah. flowers are huge for him because of just, like, blooming and growing into who you are and, like, having mm. done the hard work. And, yep. and a lot of that metaphor, a lot of the metaphor of the entire song was literally just us texting each other about how, like, when it was just, like, cold, wet dirt, and all it was was rain. Like, we did the hard work together of, like, tilling that soil, and we had no idea what it was going to be, and now we've helped each other bloom and grow into the people we are. And, and that's the thing, is, like, you, ha you have to keep working it. Yeah. You have to keep working yourself all the time, and you have to keep working your relationships. Like, if you're not... Mm -hmm. I don't know, like, if you're not down in the trenches with someone, then, like... I don't know. What are you doing? What are you doing? I yeah. also don't get shallow relationships and I don't get small talk and I don't, I don't, like, I, I'm one of those well, people who I'm like, you want me to go to the office party and you want me to, like, talk about nothing with people who aren't saying anything for, like, an hour? I can't. Yeah. I can't do it. Like, well, and I, and I, and I actually, uh, I like that you brought that up because you, because going back to that song you know those are some really you know those are some heavy heavy ideas to put it you know, like to put in a song or anything it's like you know about personal growth and everything but i love that you mentioned yeah this song came from text messages yeah. because you know it's like easy to get cynical and think oh people aren't actually friends like that like you know and it's like no but they are mm -hmm. and i love the f and i don't know i just i th i personally think that it's really cool that those were actually like actual like, like a, that you wrote that song. To each other while yeah. they're gushing in the middle of the night. Exactly. And I love that you wrote I love that you wrote that song and I love that you took actual words that you said to each other in conversation to write that song. Yeah. I just there's something really special about that. Yeah. Yeah. And like so much of I don't know, like it's it there's a Oh what he say, what he say. Oh, Louis says I'm a cry, it's fine. <laughs> I'm a cry, it's fine. <laughs> Sorry. Well, you, well, I mean, you two are great friends. Like, I mean, that's, that's a good thing to cry about. Under all conditions. Oh, that's my tattoo. Hiding under all conditions. That's so cool. We're like that's tattoo so cool. married. Yo. Also just like the rest of the kind of married. It's good. 
I mean, that, those are healthy things. So you both, so, oh, that's right, you both. This is in his handwriting, yes. and he has the same tattoo in my handwriting. That's amazing. We're great. Hashtag relationship goals. For real. Yo. I want to play a song. Songs. And this really isn't about friendship, but it's like the close, but it is the closest thing I've ever written to a happy song. So, nice. for all of you watching back home, this song is called Springtime. Feel free to sing in the privacy of your own rooms or commutes or wherever. Yeah. I'm not good at banter. And the springtime was arriving. Clouds were white instead of gray. Snow ran down into the gutters. And the crocuses woke up to start the day. And I couldn't help but smile. Even if my eyes were growing wet Turn my face to the horizon Try to slow the beating in my chest So give me blue skies in a bottle Give me sunshine in a pill Give me smiles and give me laughter In a jar I can keep on my windowsill when the world starts getting colder, I'll feel a decade older, you know I will. So give me blue skies in a bottle, give me sunshine in a pill. Was it what my parents taught me? Was it just how I was born? Cause I'm always counting all the lines around my eyes. Against the things I haven't done And every pebble on the sidewalk Every blade of grass that tickled my bare toes Is gone, is always gone too soon To somewhere I can't go Skies in a bottle, give me sunshine in a pill. Give me smiles and give me laughter in a jar I can keep on my windowsill. Cause when the world starts getting colder, I feel a decade older. You know I will. So give me blue skies in a bottle. Give me sunshine and a pill. Give me blue skies and a bottle. Give me sunshine and a pill. Thank you to Louie, who also Hi said buddy. the same thing. Hi, buddy. Hi, buddy. And also, thank you to Emily, who just tuned Hello. in. Thanks for watching, She's so good. She's so cool. She really is. So is her dog. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, I actually, just to get, like, real personal Six five five. for a Sorry. moment. Um, we're going to hear one last song from Rachel before we have to close out the stream. But I do want to thank all of you who are watching right now for watching um, cause this is like a new thing for me and I want to also thank Rachel for being on this because Thanks she knows it's team. a new thing and she was just like, yeah, of course I want to be on your TV show that you're trying to make. That's not really a TV show, but it's sort of the closest thing to a TV show because that's what Facebook live is. So thank yeah. you. 
and thank thanks to all of you. And um, while we here, I want to hear. Um, I would love to hear one more song from you, Rachel. If you'd be willing to play one more song, who's got and a also, request? Anyone? No one. Yeah. And also, just uh, tell us where we can find more of your music on the internet. You yeah. can go to rachelmarie.com. There is a link to rachelmarie.com in the description. You can of this go video, to my Spotify. Actually. You can go to my Patreon if you want to give me your money. Yeah. yeah. And actually, just like. Yeah. And actually, just really quick about that. Um, both of us actually have Patreon pages, it's and true. I don't know. It is it is an interesting thing that. Well, I think it's a really cool thing that people that. You know, in this day and age when there's, like, so much stuff going on the internet, like, there's a lot of that you can kind of say to people, here's my, like, say, directly connect to people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But I am rambling. Okay, so, so, Rachel, do you want to play us a song? No one's got a request! It's okay. Oh, I'll do a thing. Okay. What I've been saying about this song is that I haven't, um, I haven't seen the Mr. Rogers documentary yet, mm. planning on it. My grandmother loved it. Uh, my claim to fame as a child was that my grandfather went to school with Mr. Rogers. That's right. They were like friends. Um, and I always sort of thought of him as my personal Mr. Rogers, um, even though he was neither a television sensation nor a minister. But I think the way he handled his job as a school administrator was very akin to Mr. Rogers handling his life. Anyway, here's a song. today everybody again thank you rachel for coming on thank you to thank all you. of you watching and um yeah this has been let's talk about songs that is still so weird to say and um but uh yeah we will be 
all of y'all uh, tuning in now, tune in next week, same exact time, 6 p.m. Eastern, Facebook Live. Do you Live. have a guest? Do you have a buddy guest? I do. I have Nico Rivers. Yeah! Nico Rivers. He's an Nico's absolute, the best buddy guest of all. He is an absolutely fabulous ah, songwriter. I am good. so he's psyched too, to have he's him. Too good. Um, but in the meantime, up until next Tuesday, um, go to Rachel Marie's website, rachelmarie.com. There is a link in the description of this video. Check out her music. If you dig her music, you should subscribe to her on Patreon. And then you'll get fun, cute behind the scenes videos that I really enjoy editing. Yeah, because, they, um, they might yeah. Involve cats. because Rachel makes a lot of cool stuff. And if you subscribe to her on Patreon, you'll be able to get it before anybody else. It's true. Um, it's real. Also, if you uh, want to, also, I make a lot Go of cool the, stuff. And I if you want to critique one of my dollars, you should too. Yeah, uh, I was going to say, Rachel's a patron of mine and she knows that if um, I also make lots of cool stuff and if you That's subscribe true. to me on Patreon, you get to see it before everybody else and you also get to make this show happen because this show is one of those things I'm making. But thank you guys. Thank you all for watching. Uh, we are out of time today. Next week, same time, same place. Love y'all. Have a good week.